Good morning, neighbors. Let's sing another song by Fanny Crosby. One of my favorite hymn writers. And she was a blind woman. So this title of this song, Will Jesus Find Us Watching? It's a it's not just natural, it's a spiritual understanding this woman had. When Jesus comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night, faithful to him will he find us watching with our lamps all trimmed and bright. Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright home? Say, will he find you and me still watching, watching, and waiting for the Lord to come. If at the dawn of the early morning he shall call us one by one, when to the Lord we restore our talents, will he answer me well done? Oh, can Waiting when the Lord shall come. Have we been true to the trust he left us? Do we seek to do our best? If in our hearts there is not condemns us, we shall have a glorious rest. Waiting when the Lord shall come. Blessed are those whom the Lord finds watching. In his glory they shall share. If he shall come at the dawn or midnight, will he find us watching there? Waiting when the Lord shall come. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Are we watching and waiting when the Lord shall come? So Fanny Crosby, she wrote this song. And well, she wrote the lyrics to it at least. And uh, there's a lot of depth here. And I think you can find almost all of it in Matthew chapter 25. In verse 1 it says, the ki Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil on their vessels with their lamps. Now, they were all virgins. So they're all believers. They are all uh, kept clean. You know, they were virgins. They did not... You know, go around committing fornication. This is a parable, but committing fornication with the things of, with uh, the things of this world. Uh, so they're all cleansed in that in that respect. But f 
five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. The wise took oil in their lamps. This signifies they they went the whole the whole way. They went and prepared themselves with the oil. Their lamps were all trimmed. They were ready when the bridegroom would come, because the bridegroom, and according to Jewish culture, they would uh, they would come at different hours. And you know, you were prepared. You were, you were called as the bride to go prepare itself. The bridegroom will come at a time. Like Jesus say, at the time you don't know. You know, if you understood their wedding culture, the, a trumpet would sound, and that shouldn't signify something. If you're a Bible reader, the the trumpet would sound, and you're you have got to be ready. And there would be this whole caravan kind of coming through the streets, celebrating, waking everyone up to say, "I'm coming to get my bride now." The wise had oil in her lamps; they were ready. The five the five wise, the five foolish, though they were still virgins, waiting on the on the bridegroom. They did not have oil in their lamps. They were not completely prepared. What is that oil? It is the gift of the Holy Ghost, as we've been saying the last few days. It is the Holy Spirit residing within you. Some people like to say, well, the five foolish are lost and the five wise are, you know, the, are just Christians. But no, they're all virgins. They're all waiting. But five were ready for the rapture, for Jesus to return, the bridegroom. Jesus is the ultimate bridegroom. They're waiting for his return. They're all waiting for his return, but five were wise they're prepared but it says but while the bridegroom was delayed they all slumbered and slept you know uh waiting throughout the church ages waiting you know but when the sound comes and at midnight a cry was heard behold the bridegroom is coming go out to meet him then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out but the wise answered saying no lest there should not be enough for us and, and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. You know, we don't have this intimate relationship. Watch, therefore, for you know, not, know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. You don't know when the bridegroom is coming. You've got to be ready and prepared. Uh, there will be signs, but the ultimate time, even Jesus Christ admit, only the Father knows. Because according to Jewish culture, the Father would know when the house is prepared for the wedding and for the couple to come to live there. And it wasn't until the Father gave the okay that the groom could go get his bride. This is ancient or older uh, Jewish custom. But it's interesting what Fanny Crosby says. So that's what she's saying. She's basing it on this scripture. Watch, therefore. You don't know when the day or the hour is. So the qu she asks a question. Are you ready? Ready for the soul's bright home? Say, will he find you and me still watching? Watching, waiting when the Lord shall come. Are you still watching? It's a question you have to ask yourself. I, I and no one else can answer that. If you're spiritually looking... But then, uh, what it's interesting, Jesus, remember, these are Jesus' words, really, the parable of the ten virgins, but then it's the parable of the talents. It goes right into that. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. So again, it's a story about something's been given, I'm expecting something out of you, then I'm leaving. And I'm going to let you prove yourself. So the five, the one man gets five talents, which is a measure of money. And he goes and he trades in verse 16, trades with him and makes another five talents. Likewise, the man who had two, he went out and traded and gained two more. But in verse 18, but he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. You know, Jesus understands who he is. He's trying to, Break it down very simply so that they can understand. It's like, you know, they would have understood a wedding ceremonies, wise, foolish, oil, lamps, and all these things when the bridegroom comes. They also understand this. But Jesus, you know, they don't really recall, wonder, understand what Jesus is saying. The bridegroom was delayed. And now it's, in this one, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. What are you saying? I'm going to be gone a while. This is going to take a while but I'm going to come back and I'm going to expect something. So it, to each one, the five and the two, he says, uh, well done, you know, uh, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, you've done 
you uh, you've been faithful over a few things i'll make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your lord but then he comes to the one then he who had received the one talent came and said lord i knew you'd be a hard man reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed and i was afraid and i went and hid your talent in the ground look there you have what is yours you know he's really saying i'm giving you back what you gave me you know but i was afraid and that's a lot of time we let fear control our lives we don't do what we're really supposed to be what we're here to do but his Lord answered and said to him, you have you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my bank, my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have even what he has, he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, we have a job to do. We have a responsibility. He is the one who ultimately gave us it all. And he gave it to us because he knew something could come from it. But what's interesting, this one with the one, he said, you know, I, I'm reading out of the New King James Version. But it, it's interesting. He said, you should have gone to the bankers, you know, and got interest. You know, you may not get much interest, but at least you would have got something more than what I, just what I gave you. I want, I'm expecting something in return. So, Lord, help us to be like that and through, go throughout this day to work for him and to be able to give back and show him, Lord, this is what I have done, and let us all hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. So God bless you. I hope to see you again.